Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Sanch, welcome back to the Bodybuilding News Network on our way across country to Philadelphia for a work trip. We are in Des Moines, Iowa currently, but the most exciting and most important thing and what you've come here to watch is my preview and prediction for the 2023 it used to be called the Yamamoto Pro, but now it's called the Cheru Classic France. Last year it was the Yamamoto Pro France, and this year the title changed, the name changed, just like a couple of the Italy Pro Show changed their names. It is frustrating a little bit. I'm sure I could do a whole rant video on that. Let me know down below if you guys want to hear a rant video on that. I definitely can do that. But let's go ahead and get into this lineup. And uh, far and above, beyond all the other competition, clearly, honestly, no disrespect to any of the competitors in this lineup here, but number one coming in, Nathan Diasha, is, in my opinion, by far the favorite to win this show. Uh, debatably, could have won the Europa Pro Spain just a few weeks ago. Second place to none other than Canadian sensation Instagram influencer Regan Grimes uh, I would say like I said Regan Grimes phenomenal but Nathan Diasha clearly the favorite here uh, we don't have uh, any huge names in this lineup that I think could really push him in terms of size conditioning the complete package uh, is something that Nathan Diasha has going for his 11th pro show win this weekend stay tuned on the bodybuilding news network for live updates on the schedule and who's coming out when who's on first who's on second and speaking of who is second we have Khalid Al Kazim out of Kuwait of course thank you to Mark's Max Muscle for these collage photos he did put these together so please check out his original video if you have not seen it uh, one of my favorite YouTubers to watch and look for more Two Bros One Pod, a podcast between myself and Mark's Max Muscle should be returning soon here once we settle in in uh, Philadelphia next week. But for Ali Al Kazim, I thought he had a, a impressive physique on Instagram coming into the show. Uh, clearly looking from the back, it does seem to be a, a tad shallow, the midsection is a little uh, distended on the sides. He's, he's, he's built a little thick in the midsection. And traditionally, as we look at modern bodybuilding, it really does pull away from the physiques when you have things like that going on. So I don't expect him to probably in the, be in this top 10 conversation. But if he does bring in uh, just a little bit more conditioning, if he comes in crazy tight, crazy, crazy tight, like some of the other guys we're going to talk about in just a second, he could crack into the top 10, definitely not outside uh, a realm of possibility for Khalid El Kazim. Next up, number three, Vitor Boff from Brazil. By far, I'd say uh, one of the, uh, there's two big names in, uh, in this lineup for Brazil, but Vitor uh, has won a pro show before. He's also qualified, clearly, for the Mr. Olympia competition. He wasn't in the top 16 uh, at all, but he does have an impressive physique. Uh, really nothing lacking on the guy. Just needs to continue to put on more size. Uh, I'd say the midsection is uh, as tight as it needs to be. The legs could catch up a little bit, especially from the front. I'd like to see a little bit more sweep in the quads, uh, the outer quad sweep. I'd say the teardrop around the knee. It looks nice. The adductors as well. Flows very well. He looks nice. Good calves as well, great calves. So uh, Vitor Boff, I expect him to be a top 10 competitor here. I think if he brings the right conditioning, just glancing over the lineup, I haven't come out with a top six yet, just yet, but I'd say he could even be a top six. Uh, I think the last placing was fifth place at the Arnold Brazil, uh, where I believe Raphael won that one. Of course, correct me if I'm wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Next up on the scorecard, we have... Andrea Bolzani. This guy was trained by Andrea Presti and from his physique updates coming into the Europa Pro Spain just a few weeks ago, I thought he was going to surprise some people. He looked really impressive, but he had sweatpants on for those physique updates, which made me wonder how the legs are going to look. And I would say 
The same thing I had for Ali, uh, for Khalid Al Kazim. I'll also say for Andrea Bolzani that in the back department, hamstrings, glutes, and even the midsection, uh, the midsection is a little thick from the back, and the legs, glutes, hamstrings, and heck, even the calves are a little shallow next to the really dense upper body that he has. So there are some improvements that he could make to make some improvements in his placings, but I don't think that that's something that's going to happen in just one season. So hopefully for Mr. Andrea Balzani and his coach, Andrea Presti, hopefully they continue to uh, craft a winning formula for the 2023 and hopefully the 2024 um, or 2025, apologies, 2024 and 2025 competitive season. Uh, I definitely could see him placing well uh, and improving in placings in the coming years. A gentleman that I thought was quite surprising with his improved placements is Tim Budishine. Uh, even though there's a, um, even though there's an M at the end of his name, it's Budishine. It seems you uh, German fellas out there have been making corrections, and we do appreciate it. The bodybuilding community appreciates the uh, continued co uh, communication with the fans. So please do continue to help uh, myself, Mark, EP09, Xavier with Desktop Bodybuilding, all of us out there, uh, Superset Man, help us improve and make bodybuilding a better place, a, a qual more quality place. So we do appreciate the corrections uh, and we, we do appreciate moving forward into the Olympia five weeks out. But most importantly, the Cheroux Classic France. Tim Boudichheim uh, coming into this show, making crazy improvements from the Europa Pro Spain. And honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I'm expecting him to drop in placings for this show. I think the judges were being generous with the placings, moving people around. Uh, there was some gentlemen, uh, a couple people that I thought could have placed higher at the Europe Pro, uh, the Europa Pro Spain. And I think that those um, those favors are going to be corrected. And the people that should have been placing higher are going to place higher. Uh, that's going to be my prediction for this show. So look forward to my predictions uh, coming out soon. If not, at the end of the video, we'll see how long this video gets. But good luck to Tim Budishine. And we have uh, Alfred Chirik is a, a guy I really like. I forgot his first name was Vlad. But Alfred Chirik coming into this show after a very impressive battle at the Tsunami Pro Cup. Uh, I believe it was last year, the Tsunami Cup. We didn't have one this year where um, James Hollingshead won that show. Again, ladies and gentlemen, one of those shows where it's like, they just make a show, and uh, a supplement sponsor throws a lot of money at it, and it's oh wow, now we have the Tsunami Nutrition Cup. It's like woo, but then now it's gone. And why didn't they just make it into a Italy Grand Prix, and you just combined all the money of all the Italy pro shows into one Italy show, paired up with the Amateur Olympia Italy, and you have yourself a phenomenal opportunity for a crazy bodybuilding and fitness weekend maybe you throw it in expo there really make it a whole thing that's just my opinion i think there's way too many shows small olympia qualifying shows especially when you look at men's bodybuilding you, you gotta consolidate it ladies and gentlemen you gotta make the money worth it you got the arnold uk coming around the corner over two hundred thousand dollars in prize money these smaller shows need to start pumping up the prize money or you're just not going to have, uh, you're not going to get a good return on your investment. You're not going to get a good ROI. But Alfred, I do apologize for the rant on your segment. This guy is going to be a threat. He's a top five competitor for this show. Expect to see him in that winning circle. Debatably, I'd say between him and maybe one other person could really push um, the, the favorite here. Nathan Diasha. I don't think he's going to push him, but I think that he could make it a little bit entertaining, uh, but really just a runaway show for Nathan Diasha. But uh, Alfred Chirik, um, uh, Vlad, Alfred Chirik, best of luck to him. Uh, next up, this guy, I really like him, the Mike Siesla from Germany. This guy has such a pretty physique. It flows so well. He's got crazy legs. Uh, I would say he just needs to improve the density and thickness 
overall muscularity from the front in the upper body, maintain that small, tiny midsection, and I'd say more separation conditioning, striations in the hamstring and glute department. He's got huge glutes, really thick, dense glutes, uh, but there's just not a lot of detail. So, um, Mr. Siesla, if you're listening, and uh, from Germany, I'm not sure how great your English is. I don't know if that uh, makes me a bad person or not, but if you're listening, that's what I want to see from you in the coming years. I know you're a new pro. You're fresh. You look real fresh and clean and sharp. Continue to build the thickness. Uh, work on the posing as well. Looking at, ladies and gentlemen, looking at this front double bicep, I'd like to see the elbows rotate a little bit more. I'd like to see maybe a vacuum or an abs crunched. I'd say the, um, the, the ab, when he does the, the extended midsection, it sometimes doesn't work for some people. And I think it's actually retracting and taking away from his physique. So overall, um, as the, the cat would agree, uh, that is our prediction for him. Definitely a top 10, could even be uh, in that top six, top five conversation if he comes in just absolutely nails hard, super, super dry and conditioned. Next up, Roman Fritz. By far, I would say number two, number three. I think him and Alfred Chier are going to be battling it out for conditioning. But uh, honestly, I would be surprised if they uh, give Roman Fritz a bad placing again. I mean, this guy won a pro show. He won an Olympia qualifying show this year. He's going to the Olympia, and they put him behind. You know, he they put him behind people that weren't even close to winning pro shows, and he's beat oh several of those guys earlier this year. Now, I'm not saying that he, uh, I'm not saying anything bad about those other competitors that might have placed higher at the Europa Pro than Roman Fritz, but I would have preferred to see Roman Fritz higher. He did the work with the conditioning, and since the, you know, the fiasco a couple of years ago with his prep, and he over and really came in real stringy, he's made all the corrections he needs from that. And I mean, double, what, double hip surgery? This guy looks phenomenal. He's got the size. He clearly has the conditioning. And when you, when you have physiques like this, they need to be rewarded. If you don't reward physiques like this, you're going to continue to get people showing up in shows that just aren't conditioned. And that's not what we want. That's not what we need for bodybuilding. we got to keep improving. we got to keep moving forward. So I don't want to make this one too long. I know it's super late for me. But uh, let's continue to move along in the lineup. And I will do a prediction video. Uh, it'll have to be a separate one. Because we are getting long-winded with this one. Mark Joyce, next up on the scorecard, looks like uh, he's got a lot of muscle from the back. Uh, the midsection and uh, the legs look phenomenal as well. I like how he's trying to hold a vacuum here. But he does look quite narrow in that front double bicep. I'd say, you know, drop those shoulders, rotate the elbows, work on the posing. I'd say the muscle's there. The chest, uh, I love Ian, but he's got kind of an Ian Valier chest going on right now. It really disappears when he does the front double. So maybe try to modify the posing, work with what you have, you know, let the judges see what's good on you and hide what's not so good on you. You know, the epitome of bodybuilding, right? Show your strengths and hide your weaknesses. So best of luck to Mark Joyce. Theo Laguerriere. I love this guy. I'll never know if I say his name right or not, but he has a beautiful physique and is always in contention, always in the conversation for one of the best posers for ever, whatever show he shows up to. I absolutely love this guy. Great structure, great flow, good conditioning, good density in the muscle. Again, the chest kind of disappears with him as well. Something I haven't noticed until really looking at these photos right now, live with you, ladies and gentlemen. But that is something I have noticed. It's something I'm currently noticing. Theo's going to be in the top five. There's no chance he's not going to be in the top five. Uh, it's a France show. This dude's French. Uh, he's going to get that. Uh, he's going to get that favorable look. I don't care uh, what y'all say about bodybuilding politics. It's alive and well. Uh, and I know because I've been there. I've been. Um, I've been part of this community for a while. I've gotten the message from from the pro league. I know what's going on. I've gotten the threats from the Manions. I'm in the in. I've seen it, people. I've seen it. I know. And I'll be at the Olympia in five weeks. But anyways, moving along. <laughs> Mark's Max Muscle. But anyways. 
he's, I know he says he doesn't do that as much anymore, but uh, <laughs> I always enjoy doing it um, on our Bodybuilding Breakdown podcast over on EP09's channel. Look forward to a new episode coming out uh, soon, I think today or tomorrow, for the France Pro. Uh, I'm not in that one, but I will be in the next one, so stay tuned. Moving along here, Gianluca Di Lorenzo is the next gentleman here. Looks like we saw him uh, within the last year or so. This looks like the big show weekend, I think. Uh, big man evolution weekend, whatever they want to call it, uh, over in Spain. And he looks pretty dense from the back. A little shallow in the chest as well. I'd like to see more separation in the biceps. Could be very much, ladies and gentlemen, could be a top 10 contender here. I think the, the back really speaks for his uh, potential here. The legs are very complete as well. I'd like to see a little bit more sweep to it, but overall, I think he looks phenomenal. Best of luck to Mr. Gianluca Di Lorenzo from Italy. Another Italy competitor, and uh, one of the guys I've always enjoyed watching is Andrea Muzi, a.k.a. Muzilla, over on Instagram. And frankly, you know, I'm, I like to be as honest and as transparent as I can. Andrea Muzi has not really hit the mark lately. Uh, the conditioning hasn't been perfect. I'd say the posing and the tan and the bronzer, the shine, right? The, the, what makes your, your physique pop outside of the tan just has been lacking. And the Flex Pro Weekend in Italy was not a good showing for him. Uh, he needs to make these adjustments. He needs to show up in the best condition and shape that he can. And he also needs to ensure that he's bringing the best presentation, the best package. And that includes tan. That includes bronzer and shine. Uh, it also includes making sure you're doing all your posing so you're not sweating too much on stage. There's a lot of stuff that goes into these shows, ladies and gentlemen. And if you want to place, if you want to be in the top 10, which I know Andre Muzi wants to be, you got to gotta check all those boxes. I think he's a top 10 competitor. Heck, I think he's a top 5 com competitor if he makes the improvements. He has been to the Olympia before. He qualified on points. And I think that uh, in the right show, in the right lineup, he could be there again in 2024. So stay tuned for more uh, coming from Andre Muzi in the future. Next up, we have... Dario Paolozzi from Italy. Looks like um, I'm not familiar with this background, so this must be a, uh, a new pro. Must be an amateur show here. Uh, hailing from Italy, so it could have been one of those Italy pro-ams. Earning the pro car. One of the regional shows, right? When you get over to the uh, countries outside of the U.S., you have those regional pro qualifiers, whereas... In the U.S., you have your, your, your nationals, right? With the, the quote-unquote nationals. I know I always mess up the words, but words are hard, ladies and gentlemen. Not sure where we're going to see Mr. Dario Pazzoli. Not sure where we're going to see him at all from these sh pictures we have here. Not a lot of detail. Not a lot of conditioning. I'd like to see a lot more. I think he can do a lot more, and he needs to show a lot more if he wants to be in the conversation for a top 10. So best of luck. A guy I think could be a top five contender here is Leonardo or Leandro Leandro Perez from Brazil. There's two Brazilians in this show. This guy, super impressive, very dense. I think he's got a nice classic look to him. Good chest, good delts, nice arms. I'd like to see front double and front back, but. You know, if Mark's not including them in his photos, then they're probably not very easy to find. So I definitely have this guy in my top five. Uh, and last but certainly not least, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into Antonio, thank you for watching another episode here on the Bodybuilding News Network audio only episode as we are traveling. And I didn't bring all of my equipment. I brought my microphone, I brought my computer, and I brought my nice violet purple Silent Touch Logitech Mouse Wireless USB, USB-A, right? USB-A? <laughs> but anyways, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Let me know what does your top five look like. And I guarantee you it's going to influence my top five. So stay tuned for that. Last but certainly not least, Antonio Valera Twenberg. Twen Twenenberg. Inberg from Spain. Nice physique. I love the front double. The vacuum looks phenomenal. Shallow from the back. 
I'd say the back looks a little shallow. The glutes look great, but the posing also, the posing does look, a li does, doesn't it look a little funny? He looks like he's, uh, he's not rotating the hips. You know, um, sometimes you want to, you rotate the hips and then you push the butt out. If you've done posing, it's kind of hard to explain. I'm not a posing coach. I'm not a coach coach. I'm not an, even an amateur technically. Uh, amateur natural, right? I competed at a couple natural shows. So I'd say the density in the back, he needs to put a little bit more muscle on. Posing could get improved upon. Uh, but that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching another episode here on the Bodybuilding News Network. I do appreciate your time. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a thumbs down if you didn't. And let me know in the comment sections what you did or didn't like. But I'm your host, as always, here on BNN, Josh Sanch. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.